So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2024 Mazda 3 hatchback. This one is finished off in soul red crystal metallic. MSRP is around $38,000, and this one is fully loaded. It's a 2.5 turbo premium plus. Now underneath the hood, this features a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine. It's paired to the iActive all wheel drive system and a six speed automatic transmission. This particular car with the turbo pumps out 250 horsepower with 320 pound feet of torque and can even do zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. It runs on a 12.7 gallon fuel tank and you're looking at 23 miles per gallon in the city with 31 out on the highway. And then overall curb weight is 3,400 pounds. Now for the length, it's 175.6 inches. Wheelbase is 107.3. Overall width is 70.7 and height is 56.7 inches. This car also has 5.5 inches of ground clearance. So moving on to the exterior styling now, this color looks really sweet on this particular car, especially with all the blacked out accents. You have a huge front splitter, like a massive chin underneath the front to really give it honestly a pretty aggressive look. Huge grill finish in more of the gloss black. There's a forward facing camera, got your Mazda badge, and I really like this dark trim underneath this grill section. There's parking sensors all throughout it, and you're gonna notice those LED headlights. They have a really sweet look to them, of course, with the daytime running lights, and then more of that black trim surrounding them to give this an aggressive design. Kind of reminds me of the old Speed 3 back in the day, just giving it that hot hatch performance turbo look. You're also gonna see just really smooth body contours, more parking sensors on the red, and then the farther sides of the lower portion of the bumper, you're gonna see more of that chin spoiler cutting around the front bumper to really give this an aggressive front end. I also like how where the hood comes into the bumper, you can see how it all lines up nicely with sharp lines leading their way towards that windshield. The hood itself has a super smooth design with really no lines throughout the center. It's just really clean and has an aggressive design up front. So now the side profile of the Mazda 3. Of course, being the hatchback, you have that really nice sloping rear end giving it that hatchback look. I think it comes together really well. Fantastic proportions. You're gonna see really smooth lines throughout it. Once again, just like the hood, there's no crazy sharp points or creases. You can just see a nice rounded design to the door panels and this color, now that the lighting has changed, it is a really deep, really nice looking color red. Now we have 18 inch wheels finished off in a dark color just to match the blacked out theme. Of course, you're gonna see black on the side mirrors along the body color for the door handles and then a pretty aggressive splitter down below for the side skirt, just adding to this top of the line, more sporty performance focused design. You're gonna see some chrome trim around the bottoms of these windows with more black trim on them. And we have a sunroof up top, shark fin antenna, and from the side, you can see this really cool roof mounted integrated rear spoiler. Has a nice look to it. Gas cap is on this driver's side. And overall, I don't think you can complain. I think it's got a really good proportional look. It's sporty and fun and looks like a good size car. And now the back of the Mazda 3, you're gonna see how that spoiler integrates on the upper portion of the glass. We do have a pretty large rear windshield wiper right on this back. However, we've got some nice LED taillights with a pretty three dimensional design. You can see how they're lit up right now and more smooth body lines throughout this entire rear end. You have your Mazda badge in the center with an integrated button for the liftgate release. We also have Mazda 3 all wheel drive, more clean body lines with a gloss black rear diffuser. You're gonna see that dual exhaust system, license plate right in the center, more parking sensors. And overall, I like how the back end kind of pinches towards that Mazda logo right in the center, just to give it a super unique sporty look. Moving on to the key fob, just finished off in black with your Mazda badge on one side, and then one edge of it has lock and unlock. Now, if I go ahead and keep the car locked, it does of course have a smart key. Just grabbing the door handle, it'll automatically unlock, and we can check out this interior. Now, this one does feature a real genuine leather interior finished in the black color. You're gonna see some silver trim accents throughout it. Door panel finished off in black. You can see this nice synthetic material up on top with contrast stitching, a nice chrome trim piece, Bose audio with 12 speakers, then you can see all of your window and mirror controls. That's some nice padding for your armrest and grab handle, storage down below, and then all power controls for these driver's seats. This is all the nice genuine leather with perforated leather throughout the center. You can see somewhat of a brownish orange color throughout the perforations. It's a really nice and comfortable premium interior for sure. And then we get a three spoke steering wheel with silver trim. And then now inside the Mazda 3 hatchback, keep my foot on the brake, we go ahead and fire it up. And then moving on to the gauge cluster in the center, this actually is an LCD screen. However, you do have physical bezels 
We have the tack on the left, MPG and your speed. Then you can see your range, fuel, and engine temperature. Now, if you toggle the sport mode icon, which is right over here, it'll just pop up on the screen with the sport indication. Now, moving to the steering wheel now, you got your Mazda badge in the center, some controls on the left side for Bluetooth and audio, all of your cruise controls on the right, along with your lane keeping and steering intervention. Stock on the right side is for all the windshield wipers. You also have your plus and minus for your paddle shifters, and then turn signal stock on the left. Now, something very cool, if you look underneath here, there's actually air vents on the side of the steering column, which is a great way, especially on a hot day, to keep your inner legs nice and cool. On the left side of the steering wheel, you can see your memory seating. We also have parking sensors, shortcut for the camera and traction control, and then there is just a little bit of storage. By tapping this icon, you're gonna see that pop up for that camera, top down view, along with the backup camera, and then the front view right now. now. On the left, you get one of your normal air vents. Heads up display is right in the center. Then you get some black material throughout this dashboard. I'd like more of this black leather material throughout the dash itself. All of your air vents on the side with a nice trim piece connecting them. And then the infotainment screen is all controlled using the rotary dial down below. We have all of your different shortcuts around it. You can rotate this, bump it up and down to go into everything. So going into information, you can see a few things that are gonna pop up. If I go back now, you can continue scrolling down into your entertainment and then continuing back. Of course, you have communication, nav, and all of your settings. Not really too many crazy features in here. It's decently easy to operate and you have kind of the basics of what you are going to expect for an infotainment screen. And then underneath all of that, we get your physical climate controls. You can see the toggle section right in the center to adjust your fan speed, your different zones. We do have dual zone temperature. You can also see the rear and front defrost, AC, heated seats and steering wheel, and of course hazards down below. We have a wireless phone charging pad along with two cup holders, your gear selector with all those, and then you can see the electronic parking brake, brake hold, and then volume control on the far right. The center console has more of this nice leather with stitching, same with these pieces up here. If I go ahead and slide it back, you can see how it'll open up. We have plugs down below that as well. And I do like how overall you can slide this forwards and back. Now on the far right side, we have our glove box that'll open up as you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. Well, this one is a pretty simple looking interior, just being all finished off in black. It's actually really nice, especially with the genuine black leather. So it's a pretty nice place to be, nice and comfortable as well. And then you can see we have a sunroof up on top. Got a manual sunshade with a piece of glass. Opening that up, we have a small sunglass holder, all of your dome lights, sunroof controls, and then a frameless mirror with garage door buttons underneath it. Now sitting into the backseat of this Mazda 3, at five foot 11 with a driver's seat at my height, my knees are just barely touching the seat. There is a little bit of a cutout in here to give you some extra room. Headroom, I have maybe about an inch of clearance. Armrest is in a good place. Given this is kind of a hunkered down looking hatchback, these windows are a little small, so it does feel a little tight in here. However, in the center, of course, you have a nice size armrest with two cup holders. This can seat three people back here. There's not really any amenities, so there's no air vents or anything like that, aside from just grab handles, a hook, and then one small dome light. So not really too focused for backseat passengers. There is a cargo area on the backside of the passenger seat though. So it's not bad for in a pinch. I think two grown adults are gonna be fine back here for maybe an hour or two. However, crank up the air conditioning because it would be nice to have those air vents back here. But overall, given a smaller hatchback, it's pretty decently roomy. Moving on to the cargo area, if I just grab the button underneath the Mazda logo and lift that up, the interior in here is pretty roomy. It's nice and squared off. So you can see you have a pretty good amount of storage space. You can also lift the floor up. There's gonna be a spare tire in here along with that Bose subwoofer. So it's not too bad. You can definitely tell though, this is more of a compact car. However, you can also remove this privacy cover very easily and just give it a firm pull, and get this out of the way. And you see how much more storage space you're gonna get like that. Now there are buttons right here you can press, get these seats out of the way, which I like how you can reach that from here. And with everything folded down, you're gonna see how much more storage space this car has. Now this area is a little high, so you gotta lift things maybe just a tad above your knees. But then going through the side, you can see how the seats are gonna fold down nearly flat and give you a ton of space into that cargo area. All right, setting off. <laughs> so being the turbo, of course, you have a decent amount of power. This is actually a pretty peppy hot hatch to drive. So for being, you know, pretty good gas mile, it's not crazy expensive. It's a nice power plant to where you actually kind of play with it. Now it's no sports car, it's no GR Corolla or anything like that. However, <laughs> it has enough usable horsepower and torque to just get up to speed. You're not gonna have any worries about getting up to speed on the highway or things like that. 
This is also a really comfortable car to be in. Of course, given it has the real leather seating, it does make it feel like a premium car, honestly. I'm pretty impressed. While the technology is not, you know, the most modern, the most fancy stuff in the world, it has the tech, you know, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course, built-in navigation. So it has the tech. The climates are very simple, like a car 10 years ago. However, it's functional, it gets the job done. The build quality feels really nice. It's very smooth. The suspension is nice and forgiving. It's a comfortable seating position, great view out. You know, the windshield's pretty large. Mirrors all do a great job. It's a little bit tight over your right shoulder. You know, that C-pillar way back there is a little tight looking. However, you know, decent to maneuver the car and things like that. But the seats are really comfortable. Armrests are in a great place. And as you can tell, it's pretty quiet in here. It feels like a very nicely built, nicely put together car. So for not being the most tech savvy thing, you know, pretty simple gauge cluster as well. Most modern cars are now just having this huge screen, things like that. While this doesn't have that, it has a lot of power and it has a pretty good solid build quality to where it feels like a nice place to be. The sport mode sharpens out the throttle response a little bit. But it carries the weight well, the six-speed transmission. Gear ratios are pretty good when you're in automatic mode. It doesn't really let it redline if you're not shifting yourself. Again, it's not a sports car, but when you need to, I mean, it'll just carry the torque really well. So I like the overall blend. I'm actually pretty impressed and a little surprised with how nice it is to actually be in this car. Not everyone wants the most fancy tech, so I think Mazda is a good way to go for if you don't want the fanciest tech, you just want a simple, easy to use car, but you also want something that feels refined, feels like it's put together. And this is a comfortable car. At five foot 11 too, I'm nice and comfortable in the seats. My legs don't feel like they're stretching too far or like I'm sitting on the floor. So honestly, I think I could sit here for many, many hours on a long road trip and I wouldn't have an issue. Another thing is those air vents down here are so cool. These air vents right here blow cool air into your inner legs, which is fantastic on a 92 degree day today. It is so hot outside and I'm sweating and that is going to prevent that. So that is a really good touch. Wouldn't mind since they like cooling in this car, why not put some vents back here? That would be a nice touch. But overall, the interior ride quality, the technology, it works really well. The lane keeping, steering intervention, cruise control, also works just like any high-end car. So I'm actually thoroughly impressed with this car. You seem to get a lot of the good usable tech in it without any of the fancy extra bells and whistles that many people don't even care about. Good quality car, it feels solid in here, and I like that power plant too. All right, spinning around to my honest thoughts. The power was impressive. It really is impressive. It is a peppy four-cylinder motor and it's a big four-cylinder. You know, a two and a half liter, you can just feel that little bit larger displacement from a two liter to where there's that torque, that low end grunt. And the engine never feels like it's stressing or struggling for being a smaller four-cylinder. So it's really nice that they've powered this very properly. You can opt, of course, every other trim level below this is the two and a half liter non-turbo. So that one isn't gonna really throw your back in your seat, nothing too impressive. Um, that's gonna be a little bit better. Gas mileage and of course a lower cost option gets you under that $30,000 mark starting price. So I think Mazda did a good job giving you an affordable sedan or compact hatchback and giving you still a lot to offer, especially driving in this fully loaded one. I mean, this is priced with a Subaru WRX, a fully loaded one, Toyota GR Corolla. So there's a lot of vehicles at $38,000 and I feel like this one doesn't really fall short. The only downsides, yeah, the tech isn't fancy or anything like that. I'm not the biggest fan of how the interface works. There are some steps to do some things in the screen, but a lot of people, honestly, you set it on one radio station, one Sirius station, or just have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay going anyway. So do you really need all of those features that a lot of cars have? A lot of people probably don't. What you're paying for in the car, what you're getting, realistically is the nice tech, the good cruise control, solid build quality. I mean, we're on a kind of a bumpy back road. It's noisy on this road in other cars. It's not noisy in this car. I can talk very quietly and just kind of comfortable. Now, as far as some more performance things go, so I go back to sport mode again, there's no suspension or braking upgrades or anything like this. It's not a sports car. When you go around a hard turn, <laughs> you feel the body roll. 
The brakes are certainly not performance car brakes. So you can tell this is not a hot hatch like the old Mazda Speed 3 was. It doesn't have that type of performance to where you're gonna be ripping on this through the back roads, but this gives you that power plant to get up to speed on the highway. Around town, you're not gonna have any issues. So it's a cool blend. It wouldn't be a bad idea if they did a Mazda Speed 3 to where they basically took this car, give us the six speed manual that is available in the other engines, give us a upgraded brake system, maybe an upgraded suspension as well. That would be really cool to see. Maybe make it 40,000 bucks. I think that'd be a pretty sweet option. So that is then it for the 2024 Mazda 3, the 2.5 Premium Plus Turbo. Pretty cool hot hatch out there. If you want just an economy car, but something that's got a little bit more pep and a little bit better build quality than just your typical eco car. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content. I'll see you all in the next video. Yeah.